Hi, my name is Austin Evans, and I'm the digital content strategist here at 5x5. In addition to content strategy, one of my main roles here at the agency is SEO. First of all, thank you so much for downloading this. We put it together really hoping that people would get it, learn a little bit, and really walk away with some really practical things they can do with their website to help it be more discoverable on search engines, get more people coming to your website, whether that is to donate, buy something, uh, contact you for more information, whatever it may be. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into a little bit and walk through it. So first of all, I think as the SEO expert, I always believe it is my job to say that not everything needs to be optimized for search. Um, there are a lot of reasons not to do that, which we'll get into here in just a moment. But the most important thing I can tell you is that understanding the goal of a piece of content will inform how you create it. Now, when I say content, I'm not just talking about a blog post. I'm talking about every page on your website, every uh, infographic, every video, every podcast, whatever you have, whatever you make should have a goal. It should have a purpose. And what that purpose is informs how you create it and what um, steps you need to take to make sure it can achieve that goal. So SEO really is vital for getting in front of new audiences and establishing authority on a subject. When your goal is to get new audiences, bring new people in front of your brand, that is when SEO is really, really important. However, some stuff is made for your existing, existing audience, and that's all right. That's a good thing. Uh, when you're creating content primarily for an established audience, um, a lot of times this is somebody who's already coming to you. Um, so this is people who are revisiting your website, people who are consistently buying from you, um, donors who are always already on your um, mailing list or and are recurring donors, that sort of thing. Or you're sending content directly to them, like via email or newsletter. SEO should always take a backseat to brand language. If you are not creating something to get new eyes on your brand, uh, then you really should use your brand language and um, focus on talking to people the way they expect your brand to sound. Um, that is just as, if not more important than the really SEO optimized content. You need to be able to do both and know when to do both. Uh, why does SEO matter? I think this is super important. People are always looking for information you have. If you don't provide it, your competitors will. And it just kind of comes down to that. People are always searching. Millions of searches happen on Google every single day. And there's always more in the new year than there was the previous year. And this is not going away anytime soon. Uh, so let's start by talking about how much does rank matter on the actual search page, search engines results page, which if you ever see anything uh, shortened to SERP, S-E-R-P, that's all that stands for is the search engine results page. What does it mean to be number one versus number five versus number 10 versus number 15? Well, as you can imagine, the um, spot at the top gets the most clicks. Um, uh, all in all, the first uh, spot here gets just shy of 30% of the clicks. Um, this shouldn't come as any surprise to you. And this is meaning 30%, about 27.6% of people who land on this page click this result. And then that cuts about in half for number two for 15.8. And then it drops down to 11% for this number three here. Uh, as you'll notice, by the time we hit our third spot, half the people who are going to click 53%, have already made their decision. So higher ranks really do equate to more clicks, which isn't surprising, but what you might be surprised to see is just how big of a difference it makes. Um, number one is getting all, you know, almost three times the traffic as number three here when you add it all up. So that's kind of just what the difference a few pieces can make, spots can make. When you look beyond number three, the difference becomes even more dramatic. Uh, we start here at eight and we just start kind of gradually trailing off which if you're mathematically inclined, you might already have an idea of what this looks like on the next slide. It's this really, you know, predictable slope that we kind of see in a lot of different uh, aspects of both marketing and life. Um, but you can see here, it's about a half percent drop, then 30%, and then it kind of tails off here. So there's not a big difference in going from number nine to number seven. You, you get a little bit more, but not that much more. However, there's a big difference going from number five to number three or from three to one. So as you're looking at what you want to rank for, keep in mind that these little incremental jumps up the first page, specifically when you get into top three, top five territory, really do make a significant difference on the amount of people that land on your website. All right, let's talk a little bit about position zero. That is a search SEO industry term. Uh, I wouldn't expect you to know what it is. Basically what it is, it's talking about 
um, all of those rich snippets and things that Google puts into search results that aren't the websites. I know you've seen them before. You might have just not known what they were called. Um, and there's all kinds of these. They can be video, images, quotes from an article, maps, Twitter posts, shopping links, movie times, restaurant menus, stock market summaries. And you know what? They're adding more all the time. Google's job is to keep you on Google. If you can go onto their website and search something and get the answer right in there, that's a win for them. Um, that's where they make their money is on advertising and all that good stuff. Um, so while they are truly trying to give you the most helpful information and the most helpful website for you to visit to get the information, uh, Google wins if it just keeps you right on the search engine results page, which is why all of these things exist. Here's what they look like. They should be pretty familiar to you. Uh, this one on the far right is relatively new. It's forum results. Um, basically, I've only seen Reddit and Quora pop up here, but they are popping up a lot. So uh, something to consider as you think about your uh, organic reach strategy is if you don't have a Reddit or a Quora account, it might be worth um, creating one, joining some groups or following some topics that are related to your industry and start answering some of these questions that are helpful because I've seen these forum results pop up quite a bit. So just a small tactic, but something that's, you know, things are always changing in the search world. And this is just kind of the latest example of that. All right, let's talk about search intent specifically. Search engines, and really Google, when we talk about search engines, they really care about why someone is searching. So when you're thinking about your content strategy, what am I gonna make, how am I gonna make it? One of the things you need to consider is what kinds of questions are you answering? And how is Google going to interpret the questions that people are asking to get you them to your content? So specifically, at the very top is informational searches. I think something like 91% of searches on uh, search engines are informational. It's people just asking questions. Um, so this is someone who's just really just trying to learn more about a topic. Uh, I'm gonna use an electric car analogy for the for this. So for to start out, how do electric cars affect my energy bill? Well, what does that look like? If you type that in, Google understands, hey, they just wanna know the answer to questions. So they create this rich snippet, they pull this rich snippet right here up at the top. And then I didn't do that. Google actually highlighted the dollar amount reflected on your electric bill is 45 per month. How much do they affect my bill? $45 per month. And it's that kind of hard information that earned them the win here. Um, you can see number two down here in Vestipedia, they hedged a little bit. They said 30 to 60, um, which is true and accurate, but I have a feeling that the reason Shipley here won the answer is because they went straight at and kind of put their flag on the ground on a solid number. But all of that to say, this is an informational search. I just wanna know something. Next up is commercial intent. So here somebody is looking to learn more about their purchasing journey. Um, I'm intending to buy something, but I need to know more about it. Um, the most common search in this category is that best whatever. So in this case, it's best electric cars. I'm sure you've searched, you know, best blender, best, you know, whatever. This is kind of a common thing. Um, so when you do that and you type best electric cars, Google understands that now you're kind of in the shopping space, you're comparison shopping, you wanna know more information. So because of that, Google went, goes up and they've added this little electric vehicle row up here. Uh, now you'll notice this is for the most part still really informational. This is just kind of the, M the name and the MSRP. It's not really trying to sell you anything, it's just trying to give you information. And the kind of results that are uh, come back to you are these very specific best new electric vehicles. One from Car and Drive, well, these are advertisements, but the top organic one here is from Motor Trend. Motor Trend's not trying to sell you a car. They're just trying to give you more information about it. Next up is transactional. Okay, now you're ready to actually buy a thing. Um, I know what I want to buy, and so now I just need to figure out where am I going to buy it. So now, if I were to say, okay, I want to buy a Ford Mustang Mach-E, which is their electric Mustang. Now Google understands, okay, this person's actively trying to buy something. And cars are an interesting one these days because you can buy a car locally, but you can also buy a car purely just off for the internet via like a Carvana or something like that. So because Google understands that this is both uh, something you could do both in person and online, they respond accordingly. So we have this map pack here, which this is local to me, um, with some dealerships that are around that I could go try and see, check out a Ford Mach-E. But the number one result is just the Ford website. I could go on the Ford website and do a, a purchase a vehicle that way. Um, and so this is kind of when we think about bottom of the funnel content, this is really like usually the most competitive places because these are the searches that are most closely to making a conversion. 
someone is right there at the bottom of the funnel. They just need to know where to do it. So these are tend to be the highest competition types of searches. And then finally, it's navigational. So basically what this is, I know exactly where I want to go. I'm just using Google to help me get there. Um, Ford login page, for example, um, Facebook login page, um, you know, five by five agency about us, those sort of things. It's like, I don't know the URL that I actually want to type in to get there. So I'm just going to Google it and trust that it's going to bring me where I need to go. This is really just making sure your website is set up well and clear. And it's all, you know, it's all technical SEO at that point. If you're not showing up for your own like branded navigational searches, this isn't really an SEO question. That's more of a development question. Something's kind of like fundamentally not, probably not right there. Um, but so as long as you do your, your best practices, you should show up for your own branded searches. So as we think about this, like, okay, what kind of things do we want to make to show up for certain kinds of searches? Remember, the goal of a piece of content informs how you create it. So the first two tops of these funnels, this is really where content, your content strategy lives. This is kind of the best place where they can have the most impact. Informational, the very top of the funnel, what are the questions people asking surrounding your brand, surrounding your goods, surrounding your service, surrounding the problem you solve? What are the kinds of questions people are asking, regardless of whether they're ready to actually make a purchase or not? They're just trying to get answers. And then the commercial side of things, people comparing um, different options within a space, um, whether that be um, comparing products one to the other, wondering which product lasts longer than um, which product A lasts longer than product B, um, which ones are uh, environmentally friendly, that sort of thing. So this is the kind of place where your commercial content lives. This is really a lot of blog strategy, a lot of videos, that sort of thing. So then you go to one farther down and you have your main website SEO. Um, these really, these kinds of bottom of the funnel keywords, when we think about terms of what people are searching, this is not the job of your blog. This is the job of your primary website. This is your services page. This is your home page. Um, these, this is your donate page. These are the pages um, that are really going to drive, hopefully, the most organic conversions for you. Um, when people are this close to wanting to make a decision, we don't want to send them to a blog page. And then from the blog page, send them to then our page on our website and then hope they convert. Remember, every time you ask someone to make a click, you're going to lose a percentage of them. So this is where having an SEO optimized website before you even get to a content strategy is really important. And again, if your technical SEO sound, um, any of this direct traffic uh, should work for you. If you ever have a problem where you're, brand, you're not showing up for your branded searches, that's a time to talk to a developer. Okay, so let's talk local versus national because um, it really does make a huge difference in how you approach your SEO. Some searches, Google understands you only want to know about what's around you, which makes perfect sense. So here are a few uh, searches that will only return local results. Pizza near me. Anytime you put in near me, you're only going to get the local results. Nashville bowling alleys. I've told it where I want to find bowling alleys. Whether I'm not, I'm in Nashville, maybe I'm visiting Nashville and I live in Texas. If I type in Nashville bowling alleys, that's only going to give me those results. And then sometimes this is something not everybody realizes. If Google understands that the thing you're searching is best served by someone local, it will only show you local results. So if you just search plumbers straight up, whether or not you tell it where, it will only give you plumbers in your area because it understands that a plumber the next state over isn't going to do you a lot of good. Um, and so this is what we call implied location importance. And a, there could be a high implied location like this, or as we'll see here in a few slides, a moderate implied location importance where it kind of mixes and matches. So then you have national only searches, things where it really doesn't matter where you get the information from as long as it's good information. Best pizza recipe, be, uh, professional bowling balls, which I can buy online and probably will buy online. How to fix a leaky sink, informational things. And then a lot of e-com falls in this um, uh, in this kind of category, it's like, I don't need to go into a store to buy this thing. I just need to buy it. Uh, and so that's kind of where you're going to get really only national kind of competition. And then finally, these kinds of mixed things where Google understands that uh, like a, a lot like the electric car example, the results could be local. You could care about that or you could not care about that. And you could just find somebody from anywhere in the United States. You'll very rarely get anything outside of the country. So in this case, tax accountant, translation services and guitars for sale all return both national and local results. So when I search tax account, I get the big guys, right? I get TurboTax up here, um, accounting.com, irs.gov. But then a few of these are actually local uh, CPAs. You can see down here, 
This is one in Brentwood, which is not too far from me. So if you are a local organization that is competing in these sorts of mixed uh, environments, be aware that this can get very, very competitive because you are competing a lot of times against big national brands. Um, that's okay, but understand that when you're in these kinds of spaces, your goal shouldn't be number one. Your goal should be the top local result in these kinds of environments. If the top local result is number five and everything after that is, you know, dot gov and the turbo taxes of the world, do yourself a favor and just aim for that number five. Be like, we wanna be the number one local result. Because the reality is if somebody wants TurboTax, you're, you're not gonna beat them. But if someone's like, no, I actually wanna go in and I actually wanna sit down and shake someone's hand and talk to them, you being the number one local, I mean, the first local result, even if you're number five on the list, you are gonna get those people, which is your target audience anyway. This is kind of the nuance of SEO um, where those percentage of those click-through still hold true, but this is where they get a little bit more, again, just nuanced and understand who your target audience is and what they're looking for. Okay, so what terms do you want to rank for in searches? Um, you may want to go super top of funnel and just cast as wide a net as possible, and that's a strategy. You may say, hey, I only want to rank for things that are actually going to drive business for me. I only want to rank things that are going to, I can connect that line from this person wants to ask this question and then that's my target audience and then they're gonna to wanna to buy my thing, um, which is also a um, totally valid strategy, but have a strategy. Um, depending on your goals or your audience, decide what's most important, shape your strategy accordingly. So what makes a keyword hard or easy to rank for? You found your keywords, you're like, okay, or is this gonna be hard, it's gonna be easy? Well, it depends on a lot of different things. First is just the amount of competition. Keep in mind uh, local versus national again here. Uh, you might have a relatively, um, you might be a relatively small business, which like not a lot of like, there's not a lot of big national giants in your space, but you could have a bunch of them around you like locally and that can make a very competitive environment. This happens a lot for like dentists um, and local clinicians uh, because no, you don't have a, someone who's looking for a local physician you're not competing with anybody outside of the space, outside of your immediate area, but this is a place where those people are worth a lot. And so everybody's really trying to get their local, um, doing everything they can to get local business. Uh, the level of competition, big brands are always gonna be difficult to overtake. Government pages are always gonna be given precedence. We run into this a lot with our nonprofit clients. Um, a lot of times you'll just have government resource websites that are just gonna be stuck up there at the top. And a lot of times they're not even that helpful, which is unfortunate, but um, just having that .gov makes a big difference. And then available re real estate. Uh, Google has kind of moved to like the infinite scroll thing, but we still kind of think of them in terms of pages. It's those first 10. Um, and we already know as you get closer to the top, you get more click through rate. But as Google adds more and more of those rich results in, the, everything else gets bumped down. So if there's a map pack on there, that big old map, that takes up a lot of space, especially when you think on mobile, you got to scroll before you even get to the organic results. So finding those places and understanding where you need to be uh, is really, really important. All right. And now I'm going to give you the shortest SEO checklist ever. If you want something more robust, there are tons of great online resources that you can go and you can look up. But if you are busy and you say, Austin, what is the three most important things I can do right now to make sure my website is just checking the boxes, this is for you. So first of all is the title tag and the meta description. These are one of the main pieces of information that search engines use to understand and categorize web pages. Uh, really understand all Google wants to do, all it wants to do is understand the information that's on your page, categorize it accordingly, according to how many other options for that information are available. If it can just understand what you're talking about, you're honestly a step ahead of a lot of your competition. So the title tag is this blue link right here at the top. The meta description is right underneath it. Um, whatever your keyword is that you're after needs to appear in both. Uh, that's very, very important. And something else I will point out, if there's anything that's around your keyword, something that's like a long tail version of it or some other thing that someone might search to get to this page, if those words appear in your meta description, you'll see right here, Google will actually bold it. So uh, in this case, this search term was SEO strategy. So it actually went ahead and bolded that. And uh, there's a lot of research out there that basically says when people see that the answer to their question 
of their search term bolded here, it increases click-through rate. It just kind of reinforces that. I searched this thing, that says that's what I want. It's even bolded, great, click. So that's why you should always kind of aim to have it in both places. Um, editing this depends on your platform. Uh, we use WordPress and then we use Yoast with WordPress, but that's by no means the only way to do it. Uh, yours will probably look similar to this, even if it's not this exact thing. Uh, basically, you have a spot to put in the SEO title. That's the same as the title tag. And then we have our meta description down here. Next up is headers. So headers are, uh, you'll see them abbreviated with the H and a number. So header one is abbreviated as H1. Uh, search engines understand, understand headers the same way me and you understand nested bullets. It's a hierarchy of information. Uh, you can kind of think of it like if you had orchestra was your H1, and then brass instruments was your H2, and then trombone was your H3. It's kind of a walk down of information. So the H1 is the number one thing about what that page is about. Uh, my favorite analogy here is H1s are like book titles. Every book should have a title, it should have only one title, and should be what that book is about. One of the errors we see a lot um, is people use these headings as just style choices instead of understanding like what they actually do, what they do functional as a function, functionally, there it is. Um, but when you do that, you can end up with more than one H1, you can end up with an H1 halfway down the page, and that's just confusing search engines, making it harder for them to understand what the page is about. And then your page gets uh, drops in ranking basically. So a lot of times your brand language and your search language are gonna be at odds. We see it all the time. This is a normal tension to have, and it's a healthy tension, but, and there's a good trick to handle that. So this is our own homepage. You can see we have, we serve change makers here, and then we have what's under here. Five by five is a Nashville digital marketing agency, and we go on from there. So looking at this, you would think this is your H1, and this is um, just some body copy. From a search perspective, this does not help us at all. Nobody is searching change maker, marketing agency. That's brand language. That's the words we use to help describe who we work with. Um, but Nashville Digital Marketing Agency, that's a search term. So what we've done, what a lot of websites do, is we've just tagged this bottom stuff as the H1, and then we've styled it to look like body copy, whereas the large text up here really isn't tagged as any anything in particular, but it's nice and big. So this way, a human being sees this, understands, oh, that's like really nice. I see that first, and then I read down. Whereas search engine kind of skips over that a little bit and hits this H1 and then sees 555 is a Nashville digital marketing agency, which is one of the things we really want to rank for. We want people here in Nashville to be able to find us. So you'll actually, um, next time you're surfing the web and you land on a website, if you see something along these lines where like service lines or like category names are smaller and either just above or just under kind of this brand language, chances are that's a trick that they've done as well. Don't overthink it. Title tag and H1 should always hit the same keyword to give you the best shot at ranking for it, especially if it's a competitive one. Put it in your title tag, put it in your meta description, put it in your H1. Next up is alternative text. Uh, you might see this abbreviated as alt text quite a bit. Alt text is an accessibility tool. So basically it is used by screen readers to help visually disabled people navigate the internet. What happens is uh, they will use a screen reader on their computer. It will slowly read all the copy on the page to them. Then it gets to an image. And what it'll do when it hits that image is it'll read the alternative text to them. The goal of the alternative text is to give someone who's visually impaired the extra context and content of that image to help them better understand the page. You should always write for people first when doing alternative text. This is something, tool made for accessibility, made to help people navigate the internet. So always do that. And to that um, effect, um, literal alt texts are fine, but ones with brand specific context are even better. So this was a client of ours from Habersham. Uh, they make luxury furniture um, and they are very good at what they do. Small company, but makes very, very good furniture. Um, and so here, this is a photo of one of their, art, of their carpenters working. A literal alt text in this situation would have just been a carpenter working. Like, yes, that is true, but this photo in the context of the Habersham website, it's way more helpful to say something along the lines of a Habersham carpenter working on a custom piece of furniture. It's more descriptive. It tells you what's going on. And in the context of the website, it makes a lot of sense. Also, search engines will scan these alternative texts to look for keywords. So things like custom piece of furniture, helpful for us from an SEO perspective. So always make sure that your, all your photos have these alternative texts on them. 
we recently actually heard of a website um, getting sued for not having alternative text. It does not happen often, um, but it's basically the digital equivalent of an ambulance chasing lawyer just looking for someone to sue. Um, but this is something that can get you in trouble. There are certain web accessibility guidelines that if you have a website in, on the internet, you must meet and having alternative text is one of them. All right, SEO and brand language can live in harmony. You just need to know where to prioritize one over the other. So with that, keep this in mind. Put the right terms in the right places. So title tag, meta description, H1. That's where your um, most important keywords should go. Know your competition. Always do your homework, figuring out with, you wanna rank for keyword X, figure out who else is competing on keyword X, both in your area and nationally. Just do the Googling. Um, each step up matters. Do not get discouraged if you go from four, you know, from seven to four, like that's a big difference in the amount of people that are clicking on your website. So every little bit helps. Uh, and then prioritize the right pages. Keep in mind that not every page on your website is going to attract a lot of organic um, people from search engines. About Us pages are the perfect example of this. About Us pages almost never land, never show up in search engines, but they get a lot of traffic because people land on your homepage and then they wanna know more about you, so they go to your About page. So your About page is really, really important for your audience, but it is not important at all from a search perspective. Like that's not how people get to your website. Uh, and so you don't need to spend a lot of time and energy and resources SEO optimizing a page like your about page. The ones you really need to focus on are your homepage, any service pages you have, and then your blog and your video content um, designed for that top in the middle of, of the funnel. Those are the pages, typically speaking, that uh, you're going to be competing on important keywords. Now, I don't know your website. You very well might have other pages that also would do those jobs, but this is kind of the best kind of blanket statement I can make for most, most businesses. And that's it. That's all I got. I kept it under 30 minutes. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. I am always available. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy to talk shop. Um, and 5 by 5 we do a lot more than just SEO. We're a full service marketing agency. Uh, we do digital ads. We shoot video. We have do brand strategy. We do market research um, on pretty much anything you could possibly need to help improve your clarity and your reach. So with that in mind, I hope you had this, uh, this was helpful for you. I hope you can take it and use it and make your website just a little bit more discoverable on search engines. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day.